So um, I want to talk a little bit about different kinds of pipes and what makes them sound different. And over here we have six different pipes. Um, they all speak the same note. Um, of the six different pipes, um, these two are, are principal kind of sounds. This is a this is a standard eight foot eight foot principal, and this is a an eight foot diapasony kind of sound. Um, this one is made out of it's sort of medium scale. Um, the metal is sort of medium, and it makes a principal sound. It's somewhat full with some brightness brightness mixed in, into it. If you compare it to the diapason which is made out of 30% tin instead of 50%, and um, is a little bit broader in diameter, you get a sound that is a little bit fuller and darker. And then if you compare that to a string, which is made out of 70%, remember 70% makes it a little bit brighter, and it's really skinny, and it's over length, over length makes it sound a little bit more, it's just sort of like this greeny, purpley kind of sound. And it has a beard to help it speak properly. It's just a thinner, more sort of acid, acerbic kind of sound, acidy kind of sound. And then, then we have three flutes. We have a a, a borden or a roar flute. We have a, a tapered flute that's like a, a spitz flute, and then we have a, a harmonic flute. And uh, the borden is sort of like the, in terms of borden, copula, roar flute, whatever, is sort of the, the eight foot flute backbone of the great in all of our, our instruments. Um, this one is really big in scale, and it has a roar on the top of it, which is a tube that just goes in through the cap. And it speaks the same pitch as these guys, but the reason it is half length is because the cap makes the sound wave inside the pipe double over on itself. So even though it's half length because it doubles over, it speaks the same pitch. And then we go to the open flute, or spitz flute, same pitch slightly different kind of sound. And then if we go to the harmonic flute, now the harmonic flute is the same length as the open flute, but it speaks an octave above. The reason it speaks an octave above is because you put a little hole in it, and that makes the sound wave half the length of the pipe. And if you tune into it, it's a sound that is much more sort of harmonic flute, um, orchestral in character. And I, I, I forgot about this with the last group, but, but we have uh, a couple of different reeds to, to look at reed shapes. Um, this is a typical trumpet kind of shape. Um, conical, resonator, um, block, tuning wire, and that's the, uh, the shallot down inside of it, the shallot and the reed. Um, if you want, well, you can pass that around, it's sort of interesting to look at. And it, it makes it sound the same way that a, uh, that a, uh, a clarinet does. Mm. That, in terms of coming up with equivalent things, the shallot, is like the mouthpiece on the reed on, on the clarinet, and the reed, the brass reed, is like the bamboo reed on the clarinet, and there's a wire in that that rests against the reed, and the wire holds the reed in place in the same way that the lips hold the reed in place on the clarinet, and as you move the wire up and down on the reed, it makes it either higher or lower pitch. The other kind of reed we have is, here is a, a dulzian, or, yeah, it's a dulzian, it's not a clarinet. So, and it has the same stuff. It has a resonator, instead of being conical, I mean, conical, it's cylindrical. 
and it has a smaller um, shallot and a narrower reed. And so it, it makes a very different sort of kind of sound, sort of like a um, sort of like a uh, a crumb horn. Now the other thing I wanted to show you before we finish here is is this is a, a mock up of the way mechanical action works. I'll use my stools. <laughs> this time. For the last group, I requested assistance from the audience. Um, and in this mock-up, this is our blower. It provides the wind. And that's our bellows up there. It stabilizes the wind. This is the, uh, the great keyboard, which plays the pipes in the upper right. This is the swell keyboard that plays the pipes in the center. And then this is the uh, pedal board which plays the pipes in the bottom right. And then we also have, oh, and if, if without, without actually playing it, you can see the way the linkage works. If I'm playing the grate, oh, we still got pressure. <laughs> Playing the grate, you can see this piece of actually it's aluminum rod coming out of the tail of the key down to this square here, and when this comes up, this goes back, and when this goes back, this goes back with it, and then this pulls down, which pulls down the pallet up above. It's all just a mechanical transfer of motion. Got the same thing with the swell. Pulls up here, pulls back here, pulls back there, and then pulls down. And then a similar thing in the pedal, but it's a little bit more complicated because the pedal has the couplers in it. So when you push down on the pedal, it rotates this arm, which pulls that up, and pulls this up, pulls this back, pulls that back, and pulls that down. And then we got the couplers. We put on the swell. Okay, first I'll play the grate by itself. And when I bring this up, it acts as a fulcrum so that when the grate comes up, it pushes this up. And this is attached or below a nut right there, which comes from the swell tracker. So that when it when it when this pushes up, because of this connection here, it also pushes that up. And instead of having just the grate, you have the grate and so Same thing with the pedal. And if we put on the pedal couplers, what it does is it brings this um, sticker underneath these adjusters and that's the swell to pedal so that when this pushes down that pushes up you bring a fulcrum into place <laughs> Underneath that adjuster brings the fulcrum into place so that when this goes down, that goes up. And that, in a nutshell, is the, uh, the way that mechanical action works. So I'll just transfer emotion and mechanical connection and all that stuff. And I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome.